Hi, my name is Benjamin Reynolds. In this video, we're going to look at preserving nodes for debug in Intel FPGA compiles. First, we're going to look at the benefits of preserving nodes for debug to understand why a user would want to use this feature. Then, we'll look at how to enable and disable preserving nodes. Finally, we'll go through a demo that will allow us to look at how to preserve nodes for debug through RTL, the Cordis Prime settings file, and Platform Designer. At a high level, marking a node to be preserved for debug forces Cordis to maintain visibility of the node throughout the compilation. This means the node will exist in the post-fitting netlist with the same name that it holds in the pre-synthesis netlist. Essentially, this equates to turning off some of the potential compilation optimizations on the specified nodes. Additionally, users can easily enable and disable the feature throughout their project settings to avoid needing to manually unmark any of the nodes they have preserved for debug. Once a user has compiled a design where they have preserved nodes for debug, they will be able to utilize the predefined filter in Node Finder to quickly find these preserved nodes. Digging deeper, users can mark nodes to be preserved for debug by utilizing the Preserve for Debug attribute. When marked with the preserve for debug attribute, a node will inherit the behavior of all of the following attributes. This means that all five of the attributes seen in this table will be applied to any node that is marked with the preserve for debug attribute. A quick look at the preserve for debug RTL syntax can be seen here. To mark a node to be preserved for debug in a VHDL file, Users can add the following attribute code lines to their RTL files. For Verilog, the same can be done but with the Pragma syntax that can be seen below. Once a user has marked nodes to be preserved for debug, they can enable or disable the feature through a global switch in the Cordis project settings. When the feature is disabled, the preserve for debug compiler attribute will not be applied to the marked nodes. This should prevent users from needing to manually remove and re-add nodes as they go through their debug flow. To do this, users can add the following global assignment to the project QSF file, or they can navigate to the signal tap section in the settings GUI to enable or disable the preserve for debug feature. It should be noted that this feature is disabled by default on a new project, so for users to begin using the feature, they must manually enable it. Additionally, preserve for debug features can be enabled or disabled for targeted instances throughout the design. This means users can avoid needing to enable the feature for the entire project or they can disable node preservation for specific instances if it is no longer needed. This is mainly done by adding the following instance assignment to the project QSF file where the user must provide the hierarchical path to the instance they want to target. These instance assignments will override the global switch for this setting. This means if the global enable is on, users may find this instance assignment useful for disabling preserve for debug attributes on instances you are no longer debugging. However, if the global enable is off, users may find this instance assignment useful for targeting specific instances without enabling the feature across the entire project. Now let's look at a quick demonstration of the feature. For this demonstration, I'll be using a simple design that contains a Neos platform designer system with some adder trees and on-chip memory. To get started, I'll pick a couple of nodes in the RTL to mark with the preserve for debug attribute. Starting with the top level file, we can hone in on this counter and tree result variables. We can add the preserve for debug pragma simply by typing preserve for debug with the pragma syntax. We can then copy and paste this onto a couple different nodes. We'll take a look in the binary adder tree and add some preserve for debug here. We'll take a look in the RAM and mark some nodes with the preserve for debug here. Now if we go back to the top level file, we can look at this write enable signal right here. If we want to preserve for debug that node, but we want to do it through the QSF instead, we can also do that by opening the QSF file and doing a set 
instance assignment. And if we also look at the memory system down here, if we want to pick another one, we can do the mem select signal. Also, if we want to preserve for debug through Platform Designer, we can go and open Platform Designer. Once Platform Designer is open, we can, we can right click and we can see the preserve for debug right here. We'll go ahead and select the Instruction Manager and the Data Manager, and then we'll do a file, save. And then we'll also generate the updated HDL. Now that we've marked a decent amount of nodes with the preserve for debug, we want to go to the settings. And if we look under the signal tap section, we have this enable preserve for debug. This is the global switch. And so we're going to turn that on to enable the feature to all the nodes that we marked. And then if we click the QSF, you can see that the QSF global assignment is added. If you want to simply add this without going through the GUI, you can also do that. Now, just for the purpose of this demo, we also want to showcase how we can enable and disable the preserve for debug feature on targeted instances. So we're going to disable the preserve for debug on adder trees zero and two. Do this by doing a set instance assignment. Now that we've set this up, we need to do a full compilation of the design. Once the compilation is completed, we want to navigate over to the compilation report section. Here, if we go to the synthesis folder and we look in the root partition folder, we can find a preserve for debug section. Here we'll see a list of all the nodes that have been picked up for preserve for debug. Their status as enabled and disabled will also be shown. If we look here, we can see the disabled for adder zero and we can see disabled for adder two. This is because we use the set instance assignment to target these two instances uh, as off. If we scroll through, we can see all the other signals that we marked with preserve for debug. Additionally, we can open node finder. I'm going to do this using signal tap, but this can be done with any of the other debug tools. We'll find a preserve for debug pre-synthesis and post-fitting filter. You can use this filter anywhere in Cordis that you can find the node finder.